Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to ask questions about the borders between neighboring polygons. So we'll start by using the Create Fishnet tool to create some test polygons. And I named my polygon feature class Veg Polygons. And our origin will start at 0, 0, and our y-axis will go straight north. So the same x value and then any value greater than zero to go straight north. Then every polygon will have a width of 10, a height of 10, and we'll make four polygons. So two rows and two columns. We don't need label points, and then our geometry type will be polygon. Next, let's add a field for each of our polygons. So if we open the attribute table, we'll add a field and it'll be a text field. And let's call this veg type. It'll be a text field. And let's specify the maximum length in characters to be 16 characters. And then let's select the first two rows. So if I hold the control key down, I can select two rows. And then we'll calculate that. So these polygons will calculate to be white spruce. So the text is enclosed in double quotes. And then the next row, this polygon, let's call that an Aspen polygon. So enclosed in double quotes, Aspen. And then our fourth polygon, let's call that a black spruce polygon. And okay. And then let's symbolize our polygons based on the veg type. So if we go to our layer properties and then categories for symbology. So for every different veg type, let's give it some green, add all values. So Aspen, we'll give it some Aspen color and black spruce, some black spruce color. And then white spruce, some white spruce color. Okay, so there are our four polygons. And then we'll make an adjacent polygon. Let's say our adjacent polygon represents a body of water like an ocean or a lake. So let's go back to our create fish net and we'll call this lake. And our X coordinate will be, we'll shift to the right 20 units. And then the cell width and the cell height will be instead of 10 by 10 we'll make it 20 by 20 and then we'll have one row and one column and then just okay so then here is our lake so what we want to know is what is the vegetation type along the shoreline of this lake so to answer that question, we can use the intersect tool and output as lines. So our inputs will be our lake polygon and our vegetation polygons. And the output we can call lake shoreline. And then we don't need the feature IDs. And then output type is not input that would give us any polygons that overlap because our inputs are all polygons instead we'll change that to line and then just okay to execute the intersect tool so we do get our lake shoreline and then we could symbolize our lake shoreline by vegetation type because we inherit all the information about each intersecting polygon so if we go back to symbology by category we'll use the veg type, so add all the veg types. So then let's give these a bigger, so I select and then properties for selected symbols, we'll give them a width of four or five, and then we'll give black spruce some black spruce color, and then white spruce some white spruce color. So here's our lake shoreline, and this is a shoreline bordering with, or black spruce, and then this is a shoreline bordering with white spruce. So here's our white spruce polygon. And then if we look at the attribute table, 
we have all the information. So this line borders the white spruce polygon, and we have what the length of that line is, and it's a length of 10 units long. Now let's say that we want to boat to a location where we can access the border between a black spruce polygon and a white spruce polygon. We can use the intersect tool to answer that type of question. So what we'll do is for our vegetation polygon layer, we'll make a layer representing black spruce and a layer representing white spruce. So let's symbolize our vegetation polygons as a single symbol. And then we'll copy and then paste that copy into our data frame. And then we'll use a definition query for that first layer. Is the polygon vegetation type equal to black spruce? And if it is, we'll name this layer black spruce. And we'll give the black spruce polygon some symbology representing black spruce. So there are all our black spruce polygons. And then the same thing with our second layer. We'll go to definition query. And is the vegetation type white spruce? And if it is, we'll name those polygons white spruce. And then give those polygons some white spruce symbology. So here are all the white spruce polygons. So then we could do an intersect tool, intersect our black spruce with our white spruce. And that would give us, if we did it as an output of line, it would give us the border between black spruce and white spruce, but also intersect the lake layer and output the point. And that point would be where we're gonna boat to to access the border between black spruce and white spruce polygons. So it doesn't matter what order we input, we have our three layers. And then the key is the output type is gonna be the location, which is a point. So all the points where we could vote to to access the border between black spruce polygons and white spruce polygons. So I will output that as voting destinations. They will be points we're going to vote to access black spruce borders between white spruce and black spruce polygons. And then OK. So then this is the location that we could vote to to access the border between black spruce polygon and white spruce polygon. And then if we look at the attribute uh, table for this point, we have all the information about the polygons associated with this point. So for example, at this point location, we can access white spruce vegetation type, which would be this polygon. At this location, we can access black spruce, which is this polygon. And at this location, we're on the shoreline of the lake, which is this polygon. So let's start again with our original four polygons and we'll symbolize these by vegetation type. And I'll give white spruce some textured. Okay, so we may have a layer, and what we're interested in this layer is where are the border lines between polygons within one layer, not among several layers. So the intersect tool is very useful when you're talking about more than one layer. When we're only talking about one layer, we're going to use the polygon neighbors tool. So our input is our vegetation polygon layer. I name my output in the geodatabase table of adjacent polygon information. And then let's include any information about overlapping polygons in this layer as well as neighboring polygons in this layer, and then just OK. So the output uses object ID. So let's label our vegetation polygon layer using object IDs. So label features in this layer checked on, and the field will be object ID. 
So then if we look at our table, source is the polygon we're talking about. So the first three rows, it's talking about this polygon number one, object ID number one, and then the neighboring. So the neighbor number two would be this neighboring polygon. The border line between one and two has a length of 10. So that would be this border line. And then the next neighboring polygon, polygon number three, would be this polygon. The border line has a length of 10. And then the next polygon, polygon number four, there is no neighboring border line. However, if we look, there is one point that they have in common. So that node count basically says right at that location, you have in common a point that's the same point defining this polygon as the same point that defines that polygon. So then if we want to know, well, what is the longest border between neighboring polygons, we could sort descending. And then if this was a real application, these wouldn't all be exactly 10.0. You would have a border that would be the longest length. And then the same thing with area. If you have overlapping polygons, they would have area.